welcome to a new series of short videos from Survival Skills Rider Training. I'm Kevin Williams and I'll be taking a look at the crucial role that science and scientific principles play as we ride motorcycles. Today I'll start with a crucial question. Is motorcycling dangerous? A few years back Steve Rose wrote in the Bennett's Bike Social pages, Fact! You are twice as likely to die having sex as riding a motorcycle. He went on to clarify that he didn't actually mean twice as likely, but twice the number. As he said, more than twice as many people in the UK are killed by sexually transmitted diseases each year as they are falling off motorbikes. In terms of absolute numbers, that may be right, but as another blogger explained, the article is confusing how often something bad happens compared to how often that activity is performed. If we're really interested in the risk of our lives coming to a premature end through our choice of activity, then we need to know not just how many people die, but how much risk we're exposed to. And that's why, back in the 1970s, a scientist from Stanford came up with the concept of a micromort. It's a unit that represents a one in a million chance of dying during any particular activity. It's been widely used to quantify the risk of dying from everything from drinking a glass of red wine each night to drinking Florida's water for a year. Of course, if we never drank the wine, there's no risk. Similarly, if we own but never ride a motorcycle, the motorcycle itself poses no risk. It's the act of drinking the wine or taking the bike out on the road that creates the risk. So we need a unit of exposure. Since motorcycling involves travelling from one place to another, it makes sense to work out the one in a million chance of dying on the bike as we ride it over a specific distance. As it happens, I have the UK's Department for Transport data for 2019 to hand. 349 riders died that year, whilst motorcycles were ridden for a total of 3 billion miles. That renders down to a 0.12 of a micromort from riding a motorcycle one mile. In other words, we'd have to ride just over 8.6 miles to experience a one in a million chance of being killed. Is that particularly risky? Well, that's where we have to compare it with another risk, and that's where micromorts are particularly useful. If we compare it with other modes of transport, which is what usually happens, then spending one micromort cycling would get you around 20 miles. Driving a car, you could make it about 250. Best of all, go by train, and you could travel 1,500 miles for each micromort. So it's true, looking at travel, mile per mile, motorcycling is riskier than the available alternatives, unless you're running a marathon. On average, running a marathon has a 7 in 1 million chance of killing you. That's around 3.7 miles per micromort, or rather less than half the distance you could travel on the bike for the same risk. And, in a sense, life is dangerous. After all, we all stop breathing. The fact is, there's a risk simply from being alive. Each day at 20 equates to one micromort. And, should we make it to 90, the chance of not making it to the next sunrise increases to 400 micromorts. Suddenly, the odds against us from riding a bike don't seem so bad, do they? <laughs>